Hello, my name is Miss Volgarth and welcome to another revision session all about Ruby. This time we will be covering linking questions at National 5 level. As we go through this video, please pause at any point and attempt the questions yourself or write some notes. So let's get started. So the steps. Step one and step two are much the same as you would do for any question within your RUI prelim or exam paper. You must read the questions carefully and underline the relevant part of the question. In step two, you're going to find the relevant line or sentence that's mentioned in the question, go to the text and you're going to circle or highlight. This indicates to yourself that you have found it. Now we go on to the linking part. What you're going to do is you're going to read that sentence you're going to quote part of the sentence you identify which links back. Okay. Usually we look for a breaker in a sentence such as a comma or the word and. Then what you do is you look back into the previous paragraph and you summarise that passage and how your quote shows that this links back. This would get you one mark. The second mark is you quoting a part of the sentence which links forward, usually found in the latter half of the linking sentence, and then you summarise the previous passage and how your quote shows that this links forward. We're going to go through what an example answer may look like now. This is what an example answer for National 5 may look like. As you can see, there are four bullet points. These four bullet points are equally split into two. This is where you will receive your two marks. So the first two bullet points, troubling childhood is a quote from the sentence, which is a linking sentence. And we see how this links back to the previous paragraph, which discusses his younger years in an impoverished home with parents who neglected him. So bullet point one and bullet point two would get you your first mark. You've quoted and you've successfully paraphrased why this links back. Your third bullet point, Promising Futures, links forward to when the writer discusses Presley's future success with both his music and his cultural impact on America during the 1950s onwards. We can see that bullet point three and bullet point four would get us our second mark. Now we will look at example questions so that we are able to identify linking questions apart from the rest of the understanding family. Like in your own words, linking questions have certain phrases that we can look for which let us know, okay, this is a linking question I know I need to answer in my four bullet points using my two quotes. Like in your own words, we're looking for the phrase using your own words. However, linking has the phrases link, linking function, link between. If we look at question five, the first question, we say it says, by referring to the sentence in lines 37 to 38, explain how it helped to provide a link between the writer's ideas at this point in the passage. We see the phrase, a link. We know that this is a linking question. If you look at question seven, it says, explain the function of these lines and the development of the writer's argument. We know from the first sentence that the function is mentioned so this is a linking question. And lastly, looking at question four on the bottom, it says, by referring to the sentence in lines 28 to 29, explain how it helps to provide as a link between the writer's ideas. Again, like question five at the top, we have the phrase, a link. So these are how we identify a linking question. We look for the phrases link, linking function, function, or a link between. So, top tip, please do not be thrown off by the question. A linking question should always have the phrase link function or similar phrase to indicate how to answer it. If it has that phrase, you know that you're looking for that sentence straight off the bat and you're gonna provide two quotes and one sentence that says links back and another sentence that says link forward. What we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of practice questions from previous past papers. We're going to try this one together first. If you're feeling confident with link because I've shown you an example of what an answer would look like, I've also shown you the steps that we need to do in order to answer it, please feel free to pause the video and try out the question yourself. If you're still not very confident, please do not worry. We're going to do practice one together. 
Question 5 says, by referring to the sentence in lines 37 to 38, explain how it helps to provide a link between the writer's ideas at this point in the passage. It is two marks. It also says the phrase to provide a link. So we know that it is a linking question. What we need to do is we need to identify the sentence that we need to refer to. We know that it is lines 37 to 38. So in our question paper, we would highlight these two lines to ourselves or draw two wee lines to indicate we know the linking sentence. What we need to do is we need to read that sentence. It says, one woman opposite a squad of men it's a pertinent image given her associations with Frozen, a film that has regularly been touted as a feminist breakthrough. So that is our sentence. What we need to do is we need to break it into two sub-sentences. Usually this is done with some form of sentence structure, such as a comma, or in this case, a colon. So we see a squad of men. We know that this perhaps is falling back to the previous passage because already upon scanning the previous passage we can see it says the unnerving proximity of several dozen hulking American footballers may have had something to do with it. Talking about the time that she sang at an all-store baseball game. Menzel said, one thing I underestimated is what a strong presence the athletes have when they're standing on the line right in front of you. They're huge standing there and you're this one woman singing on her own. You forget about the world and the rest of the stadium because they are so daunting. So we know a squad of men refers back. So what we do is we underline that or circle that. And then we look for a part in the passage that has a direct link to. I have underlined hulking American football players because it makes sense, a squad of football players. Then what I need to do is I need to find the link forward. I found it. After the colon, we see that it's talking about a feminist breakthrough. Frozen being a feminist breakthrough. So what I need to do is I need to look forward and see if there's anything that discusses either Frozen or feminism, which it does. If you read forward, it says the first Disney animation to be directed, well, co-directed by a woman, Jennifer Lee. It's quietly revolutionary because, as Menzel says, the purest love that's being celebrated is between two sisters and not because some Prince Charming is saving the day. So I underline that. You notice the difference in the underlines. The dotted one says that it links forward. The solid one says that it links back. So I need to do the answer now. I know I need to answer the question opening with a quote from the linking sentence. I've identified a squad of men and I know that it links back to American footballers. So what I need to do is I need to quote a squad of men and I need to paraphrase what the previous paragraph is all about, which is about Adina performing in front of these sportsmen. So I say, a squad of men links back to the previous passage when it discusses Adina Menzel feeling daunted by the presence of such large American footballers as she had to almost prove herself. So I know that I've quoted and I've linked back. The next step is to link forward. Remember, you need one sentence that says links back another that says link forward. Sometimes it'll be two for links back, sometimes it'll be two to link forward. In this case, I know that it is one for each. The next one says, I have looked at feminist breakthrough as my linking quote, and I need to see how it links forward. I discuss the fact that Adina Menzel says that feminism is about two sisters rather than a Prince Charming. So I underline that. And this is when I quote it. So I quote, Feminist breakthrough links forward in the passage when it discusses how Frozen was not about men and about women being saved, how it was revolutionary that it was women saving women. I put those two together so that I can see that I'm definitely capable of getting the two marks. I've highlighted the fact that I've quoted that one links back and I've quoted that one links forward. So this is how your final answer should look. It should consist of four bullet points, two of those bullet points being quotation marks. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the SQA marking scheme and we're gonna see how that's laid out, what the marker sees, and how this can gain us our marks. So the marking scheme along the right hand side of the screen shows you just how many options there was for linking backwards and linking forwards and considering this is two marks this is excellent for us it means that we have a good chance of getting full marks i'm just going to put our answer along the left side of the screen so the first part says a squad of men links back 
I look into the marking scheme and I try and find that phrase, a squad of men. I put an arrow to it to indicate that it's definitely on the marking scheme, which means that we should get the mark because we've paraphrased the fact that it talks about Adina Menzel being intimidated by these players. The next answer is about a feminist breakthrough. I look into the marking scheme and I see the fact that there is a quote that says feminist breakthrough. I've identified this through the arrow. So I look back and I see if I have glossed on that by linking forward. I have said that the passage discusses how Frozen was not about men and women being saved by them. How it was revolutionary that it was women saving women and it was directed by a woman. So I see that I also managed to cross that. So out of two, I know that I have received two out of two marks. Another top tip, which I've already mentioned before. When reading the linking sentence, it's important to look for a comma or a colon or a natural break in the sentence, such as a conjunction. Chances are the natural break indicates where the subject in the sentence is changing, just like we saw for practice one with the colon. We're going to do another practice paper and it's going to be practice two. You have an opportunity for this one to pause, work more independently. If you're still not feeling confident enough to answering linking questions by yourself, that's absolutely okay. This is why we're here. We'll work through it together and then we will have the answers. Practice 2 asks, by referring to the sentence in lines 28 to 29, explain how it provides a providing link between the writer's ideas at this point of the passage. Following the steps, I know that I need to highlight lines 28 to 29 in the passage, which is what we do. And then we start to read. I usually recommend reading the paragraph prior to this so that we gauge an understanding about when there's a change in subject. It says... One cannot help wondering what the silent critic on the hearth rug thinks of our strange conventions. The mystic Persian whose ancestors were worshipped as gods, whilst we, their masters and mistresses, grovelled and caved and painted our bodies blue. The famous novelist Virginia Woolf wrote in the essay On a Faithful Friend, cats held special place in ancient Egyptian society, to the point where if you accidentally killed a cat, you'd be sentenced to death. Cats were often adorned with jewels and fed meals that would make today's tin cat food look like, well, tin cat food. They were sometimes mummified. The grieving owners shaved off their eyebrows as an act of mourning. Bastet, the deity representing protection, fertility and motherhood, could turn herself into a cat. Hence the popular idea that Egyptians worshipped them. It's pretty obvious that cats haven't really moved on from the sort of treatment they received in the time of the pharaoh. They carry themselves in a stately manner and demand that you treat them with a certain amount of reverence, letting you know if you're doing a good job of petting them when they're ready for their meal and making you aware of what they like and what displeases them. My cats certainly do. They love their comfy spots and often give me a hard time when I try and make them move, shooting me a look, letting out a sad meow and then instigating a shout showdown which almost always ends up with me picking them up and their favourite place in my house among my books. I look back at that sentence, it says it's pretty obvious that cats haven't really moved on from the sort of treatment they received in the time of the pharaoh. We know the first paragraph is all about the pharaohs, we know the next paragraph is all about modern day cats, so I'm able to identify the first part of the sentence because it says treatment they received in the time of the pharaoh. We know this links back because it talks about mummies and it talks about ancient Egypt. So I find in the passage a place where it discusses all of that and I say that cats were often adorned with jewels and fed meals. The next part of the sentence I need to look about modern day cats, what modern day cats are doing and this happens to be in the first half of the sentence which sometimes means that it does link forward. It says cats haven't really moved on. We know this links forward because it discusses that cats carry themselves in a stately manner and demand that you treat them with a certain amount of reverence. So I'm going to do the answer now. We're going to split it into smaller text so you can have a closer look and we can do the answers together if you like. Otherwise, please pause when you need to answer the question. Our answer states that we've quoted the treatment they received in the time of the pharaohs. I've discussed how this links back to when the passage talks about how cats were adorned with jewels and treated as if they were Egyptian gods. 
now I need to link forward. So I quote for my third bullet point, haven't really moved on. And I've said that this links forward in the passage when it discusses how cats are still treated well and humans are constantly meeting their needs in a keen fashion. Now we're gonna have a wee look at the SQA marking scheme yet again. So the SQA marking scheme again is on the right hand side and we're gonna have a look at our own answers on the left hand side. So our first two bullet points are the treatment they receive in the time of the pharaohs. So I look into the marking scheme to see that it is the first bullet point there. So I've indicated that with an arrow. And then I need to see if it's paraphrase. So I say that it links back to the previous passage when it discusses how they were adorned with jewels. I paraphrase, so I'm happy that I received the mark. Our third bullet point says that they haven't really moved on. I've discussed how this links forward. So I look for that in the answer scheme. If you look at the second bullet point, we see that it says that this looks forward, this links forward. So I know that I have identified that, but I need to have glossed it well. So I say that it discusses how cats are still treated well and humans are constantly meeting their needs. I'm happy with that answer. I'm happy I've glossed on to it. So I give myself the mark. That means I received full marks yet again, two out of two. Well done if you paused the video and you attempted yourself and you also got full marks. You might be very confident with linking questions now. Hopefully most of you are and you won't need to do the next part of the video. If you would still like more practice, by all means, watch on. We're going to do some revision work. Most of this is going to be involving you pausing it and trying the questions yourself. It won't be two separate paragraphs, it'll be one paragraph with a linking question in the middle. Task 1 states, read the passage and answer the question below. The question says, by referring to the underlined sentence, state how this acts as a link function to the passage as a whole. The passage says, she had more vigour than any woman I had ever known of that age. She could outrun teenagers half her years and seemed to always be on the go. That's what made it all the more shocking when the heart attack occurred and her health was lost. From when she became the wizened, frail old woman, she'd always hate it. This would be a chance for you to pause the video now and answer the question. For those that are a little bit less confident, what you can do is you can look at the answer scheme below. I've given you a hint you know that your first and third bullet point will be a quote and you know your second and fourth will be how it links back and how it links forward. We're gonna go over the answer now. So the first part of my answer says, shocking links back to the passage when it discusses the woman's excellent health, especially considering her age and lifestyle. Her health was lost links forward to the passage when it speaks about the woman being wise and frail in her old age. You can pause there, you can have a look at your own answers and you can mark accordingly. Well done if you manage to get two out of two. We can see here that the first two bullet points gives us the first mark and our third and fourth bullet point, which links forward, gives us our second mark. Task two says, read the passage and answer the question below. The question says, by referring to the underlying sentence, state how this acts as a linking function to the passage as a whole. The passage says, when the sun sank down, it was a luxury to sit in its perfumed air and forget that there was any world but these enchanted islands. It was such ecstasy to dream and dream till you got a bite, a scorpion bite. Then the first duty was to get up out of the grass and kill the scorpion, and the next to bathe in the bitten place with the alcohol, and then the next to resolve to keep out of the grass in future. I've put the answer here as a hint. Remember we're quoting, we're then linking back, we're quoting the next part of the sentence and we're linking forward. What I will say before you pause is notice that there's a natural break in the sentence, there's a dash, Use that as an indication to split up the two sentences into one linking back and one linking forward. We're now going to go over the answer to task two. Task two's answer is as follows. We know the first part of the sentence will be before the natural break, which is the dash. So I look and I see to dream and dream. I quote this and say that it links back to when the author feels comfortable 
on the island relaxing. So that's what the first part of the passage is all about. After the dash, this is where we see a change in the passage because he gets bitten, his happiness is gone. So I quote, till you got a bite. This links forward to when the writer describes the relaxation being ruined by a scorpion bite, to which he has to get up to tree. I look and I see that I have made two quotes and two attempts to link back and forward. This would mean that I would get two out of two marks. Have a look at your own answer now and mark accordingly. Well done if you got full marks. This leads us to our final task, task three. We have discussed four questions in total now and have been through how to lay out the questions accordingly. You should be feeling confident to attempt a past paper question yourself. Please go onto the SQA website, find the Rui past paper from 2017 and attempt the linking question yourself. This will help you identify the question amongst others alongside it and will help your exam technique. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for listening along and partaking in the revision tasks. I hope this has helped you understand linking questions a little bit better. Please remember to give this video a like, subscribe for more revision content and I hope you all have a wonderful week.